So a lot of people are interested in this dragonfish and how we filmed it. Many people have pointed out that it looks dead. And some people don't even think they exist. There are other fish called dragonfish. Most commonly this one, the beautiful Asian arowana, that's like a Chinese dragon and is a prized aquarium fish. It's pretty endangered. And it's fresh water. Here, we're talking about the deep sea dragonfish. There are about 70 kinds found in the oceans all over the world. The deep sea is very deep and very big. That's why it's hard and expensive to find anything here. And so there's still tons to know. Exciting, because that means well over half our planet is pretty much still a mystery. So, this is how we filmed a dragonfish. From an expedition done in 2005. Firstly, we were with a scientific team researching the deep sea, working out of the Scripps Institute in San Diego and organized by Harbor Branch, another marine facility in Florida. The ship was fitted with a special type of trawl net known as a cod end trawl. That's just like an ordinary net, but has a canister at the end of it known as the cod end. The mouth of the whole net can be open and shut remotely. And so by opening it at only specific depths, you know what you're catching comes from that depth. We opened the net at about 600 meters. That's nearly half a mile down. For about six hours, twice a day, we'd put the net down and trawl along a deep sea trench between San Diego and the Channel Islands. Known as the San Clemente Trench, after the southernmost Channel Island, San Clemente. If you're an Apple Mac user, you'll know that they're currently using the Channel Island names for the latest OS, like Catalina. It's always dark where the creatures of the deep sea live and trawling through the night makes little difference. When the net comes up, the cod end is emptied as quickly as possible into a container and the contents, the deep sea fish, squid, shrimps, various plankton and larvae, snails, are all sorted out to research. Over about two weeks we saw several interesting fish this way, not used to knocking into anything in the open sea and they have very thin skins. And also the temperature change, down in the deep the water is very cold, but of course in the summer in California the surface is very warm. As they come to the surface there's of course a massive pressure change for them but deep sea fish have a lot of adaptions to changing pressures and would naturally rise up at night in any case with the daily migration of plankton. We filmed them in a special tank called a Kreisel, which is the German for merry-go-round. Circular flow of water keeps the animals from touching the sides. You've seen one if you've ever gone to look at jellyfish in a public aquarium. It's the way they hold delicate creatures in mid-water. If the fish was dead, we could also hold it. Some people have said this is cruel, but we wanted to show these animals to you, and having died, the least we could do is make them known. In this fresh state, they're much more valuable to observe because when they're pickled in alcohol, like a lot of laboratory specimens are, they soon lose their shape and color. Filming the deep sea is difficult and expensive. Trawling is not great because it damages the animals. But using a submarine or ROV remote vehicle is even more expensive. Perhaps as small remote camera systems get better, we'll begin to see even more. 
but until then we're using methods devised by the Victorians in their first expeditions to the deep sea nearly 200 years ago. I think it's extraordinary that we share our planet with animals like this dragonfish. And there's many more weird and wonderful creatures from the deep on this channel. Please subscribe below.